بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ٹوڈے از اور فسٹ لیکچر اینڈ یو نو یو آر سینگ ہیئر دس از دی ٹائٹل آف دا فسٹ لیکچر کانسیپٹس اینڈ ڈیفینیشنز آف لا اور سبجیکٹ از دی بزنس لا اور دا مرکنٹائل لا اینڈ ان اور پریویس لائف سیشن Uh, I've told you about the course outline and the core areas uh, which we will learn uh, throughout the semester. The core areas uh, are like uh, the Contract Act, the uh, Partnership Act and, uh, and the Negotiable Instruments, Sales of Goods Act and the Company Law. Uh, before going to the core areas, it is very necessary and, and very important for you that you should learn about uh, the basics of law and what are the concepts of law, what are the definitions, of, what are the histories of law, what is the significance of law because uh, you people are not familiar with the uh, subject uh, of law and, and this is not your specialized subject. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, uh, concern about business point of view and, and like uh, your degree uh, point of view uh, that this is related to the business administration and management uh, related to your degree. So this is very necessary for you to learn about uh, the law, especially the business law. So we will uh, uh, learn, inshallah, all Aziz, in our uh, different core areas that are very related to the business and, and management areas. Uh, but before going to those areas, we will uh, learn about the what are the concepts and what are the basics of law and what are the significance and what is the history of law and how it emerged and how people, uh, how it is implemented in the society. So let's start here. Definition of law. A law is a system of rights and obligations which the state might impose and enforce. The law consists of rules that regulate the conduct of individual businesses and other organizations within society. So simply if we uh, explain this definition uh, that means uh, law is uh, that is going to protect your rights and there must be uh, a binding force uh, enforcement authority behind the law that imposes the law that implement the law in the society and that is called simply your state or your government. So uh, the law is, uh, is the protection of your right, is for the protection of your right, is for the implementation uh, of obligations and uh, all those obligations and all those rights will be implemented and enforced by the authority, uh, law enforcement authorities that is called the government, uh, the, uh, the, the state, the prime minister, the, um, the uh, different law enforcement agencies which have the power given by the state. So it regulates, it rules that regulate the conduct of individual businesses and other organize, organizations within um, the society. Within the society and uh, uh, inter-society and inter-state as well. Definition of the law. These are the different uh, definitions, different scholar, different historian, different lawmakers uh, give their opinion about their, uh, uh, that they uh, suggest that what is law, what the law is. According to Blackstone, Blackstone is a, a very famous dictionary and we oftenly consult this dictionary in, in, in the law terminology. So the Black law, uh, Blackstone Dictionary defines law, signifies the rules of action 
and is applied uh, indiscriminately to all kinds of actions so uh, there uh, according to this definition there must not be a discrimination that everyone is equal in the eye of law either he is a prime minister either he is an individual of the society either he is uh, mna mpa everyone equal in the eye of law so there must not be a discrimination while uh, implementing the law in the society while enforcing the law in the society according to holland uh, holland is a, a writer and he is a lawmaker law refers to a general rule of action taking cognizance only of external acts enforced by a determinant uh, determinant authority which authority is human and among human authority is that which is permanent in political society so according to this definition that uh, the uh, cognizance means the jurisdiction that you are uh, you have the authority of a specific area only of external acts enforced by a determinant so this is uh, law is related to according to this definition is explaining uh, furtherly that uh, the law will be enforced only only the external act not the internal act because internal act nobody know what is the internal act of of a person so according to so for the uh, internal act there must be another uh, law that is the law of allah as being a muslim we know that uh, everyone is accountable of his or her own action but uh, allah is um, as you know jo allah ka nizam hai jo allah ka system hai uske andar bhi aap dekhenge ji allah insaan ke jo internal acts hain unki niyaton pe unko pakad nahi karta hai jab tak aap usko prevent uh, you are not going to practically implement on your bad ideas Uh, so this is a very uh, complete definition and this this definition defines a law more appropriately which authority is human and and this is a human and among human authority is that which is permanent in political society so according to him the political society mean the government the state uh, and, uh, and, and and the state that have definite territory that state Uh, independent state and there must be a political government so that can uh, implement mm, uh, the law and that can enforce the law that can protect the law uh, rights and rules and regulation according to the hobbes the commands of him and them that have uh, coercive powers so coercive powers mean that uh, absolute powers that uh, give the commands and that can implement the command means state or authority or sovereign or kings or rules uh, or ruler uh, so according to austin a law is a rule of conduct imposed and enforced by the sovereign so this is simply uh, sovereign mean uh, either he is king either he is prime minister either he is president whatever the name you given either he is a dictator uh, so a law is a rule of conduct imposed and enforced by the sovereign simply and uh, according to john askren uh, law is the command of sovereign containing a common rule of life for his subjects and obliging them to obedience so of course uh, this definition gives uh, another point of view that uh, uh, actually the law the implementation of law means that everyone obey uh, because when you Uh, this is uh, that mean mm, mm, enforcement of the laws and regulation this mean binding force that you should be obey you must obey uh, the rules and regulation you must obey uh, your sovereign your authority according to pound law is the body of principles recognized or enforced by public or regular tribunals in the administration of justice so this is Uh, this means that uh, related to the uh, the court of law so enforced by the public and regular tribunals in the administration of justice administration of justice mean uh, uh, the practical implementation of justice in the court of law while uh, where uh, different uh, tribunals different courts uh, district courts high
high court, supreme court, different uh, uh, authoritative courts that uh, uh, given different uh, authoritative parts. According to Wilson, law is that portion of the established thought and habit which has gained distinct and uh, formal uh, recognition in the shape of uniform rules backed by the authority and power of government. So this definition, uh, this is another definition which also defined that uh, there must be a recognition, there must be a distinct and formal recognition of shape of uniform rules backed by the authority and power of government. So according to Green Law is, is the system of rights and obligation which the state enforces. So this is the simplest definition that uh, uh, for every rights and obligation, for every enforcement of rights and obligation, there must be a state and, uh, and that enforce or implement the law. So these are the different definition and different point of view of different writers and different uh, uh, lawmakers. Significance of law. Law is to maintain rights, uphold justice and redress wrongs. Uh, so simply it means that uh, 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 law to maintain the rights and to maintain the justice in the society if there is law. Uh, there must be a justice if there is no law there must must be a justice uh, you will uh, you will there will not be a protection of your rights uh, nobody uh, will um, obey the law if there is no binding force if there is no authority behind the um, uh, uh, enforcement of rights so redress the wrongs uh, means uh, that the person uh, to whom the other person uh, redress the wrongs mean uh, and the compensation given by the court uh, to the person whose rights is violated by the other person law ensures public order balance harmony peace among the persons within the state and interstate so law is uh, balancing and the harmony and peace in the society, uh, in the state, in the provinces, uh, within the state and interstate. So uh, interstate, uh, within the state, there are different uh, laws uh, which are uh, uh, prevailing in, in the state like uh, you, uh, uh, traffic laws uh, and civil laws, criminal laws family laws, uh, custom and precedent are the source of law in different areas where uh, people uh, uh, give decisions to, through the jirga system, you know, and these are the traditions and uh, customs of that very uh, areas and the cultural laws and, and the Islamic laws and the jurisprudence, Islamic jurisprudence, different uh, political laws uh, the laws, uh, rules and regulation uh, and the laws which are making by the uh, parliamentary act through the parliament and, and the presidential act that is uh, ordinance you can say and these are the different types of law within the states and, uh, and, and in the societies so these are the uh, different types of law and interstates mean different types of treaties between the states uh, like uh, trade treaty, like war treaty, uh, like peace treaty, so uh, like different kinds of uh, handling of uh, of prisoners and and different types of treaties. So uh, for the balancing of harmony and peace in the society, within the society and uh, within the state and interstates uh, to maintain the peace in the world. So basically the main object of the law is uh, to protect your right and to uh, give you justice uh, indiscriminately and to maintain the law and order situation and, and to maintain the peace and harmony in the world and in the specific area and specific territory or state as well some other concepts of jurisprudence are given below jurisprudence means the knowledge of law or knowledge of, of just and unjust 
it deal with the law that are enforceable by the court so enforceable by the courts mean go courts or the judges give you the uh, different uh, uh, decision on the basis of the uh, trial on the basis of course on the basis of the evidence so uh, when they gave the judgment so the judgment will be enforced by the uh, authority means state so uh, the judgment mean enforcement of the law in the courts so there are different kinds of jurisprudence jurisprudence mean uh, if uh, we define uh, jurisprudence in and jurisprudence mean explanation jurisprudence mean uh, if we define it in a in islamic terminology it mean it's mean fiqh and if uh, i gave you the another uh, uh, the simplest meaning of the jurisprudence mean uh, to understand what the law is what the law uh, what the basic law say the jurisprudence has been divided into following branches analytical jurisprudence uh, historical jurisprudence and ethical jurisprudence so uh, we will uh, discuss one by one scope of analytical jurisprudence its scope is in an enumerated below uh, analysis of the law as it exists treatment of concepts in its elementary subdivisions study of the legal source of law and uh, it analyzes the basic principles of civil law it does not pay any attention to the evolutionary process and their ethical aspects it uh, uh, is whether they are good piece of law or bad one we can say that uh, analytical jurisprudence does not consider the historical and ethical aspects its scopes uh, can be underlined as given below so basically analytical jurisprudence uh, not discussed about uh, what is the base of the principles of the civil law what are the ethics of the uh, um, uh, uh, of the civil law how it produced what is the history of the uh, law it uh, uh, only discuss about what is the analysis of the jurisprudence so uh, it uh, analyzes of the law that what law says what uh, the means of law what uh, actually point of law about this uh, case of this course of action this uh, specific situation treatment of a complex idea or concept in its elementary sub uh, division so uh, the another uh, way to uh, treat the complex idea or complex uh, uh, concepts and definitions uh, from its elementary subdivisions and explanations uh, examination of the relations between civil law and other forms of law so uh, this is also uh, the uh, the important that it also examine the relation between other laws uh, uh, actually it is the civil law and what are the uh, relation with other forms of law like criminal laws like family law like uh, law of the land contract as partnership act administrative laws so different types of law so what are the relation of this uh, civil law with the other law it analyzes uh, like this study of the legal source of law what is the legal of source of law how uh, from where uh, law produced from where uh, different law maker make this kind of law an investigation of the theory of legislation precedent and custom so what is legislation legislation mean is the process uh, that uh, in the way that you are going to make a law like uh, uh, you can say in our pakistan uh, the the lawmaker are uh, there in, in in parliament and they legislate about different uh, point of view this different course of action and they give their opinion then they make a law so this is legislation mean the process of law precedent mean the example set by the courts are different course of area when uh, somebody uh, um, uh, uh, similar practice uh, be happened in um, every course of action so this will become a precedent or custom you can say custom mean i uh, mean and mean the uh, the habits and and the cultural uh, proceeding of a specific society uh, that uh, in civilizations in different eras they uh, often lead uh, uh, do the same uh, 
practices on a specific course of action specific uh, uh, related to different uh, uh, like you can say different uh, so custom is also the uh, uh, kind of law precedent also the kind of law classification of the different subdivisions of uh, corpus uh, jurors or the entire body of law with reason there for and the corporate corpus jurors mean and uh, the jurors mean the lawmaker and the corpus mean their books uh, their collection uh, of uh, different laws are the entire body of law with reason therefore a treatment of rights their kinds and classes their creation transfer and extinction so uh, uh, this is related to the analytical jurisprudence dealing with the legal liabilities its kind extent and incidents that how it, uh, it how it can be extended and what are the incidents and what are the liabilities what is the legal uh, 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 things like this uh, to investigate such legal concepts is property possession trust contract person acts intention motive negligence etc so uh, basically it analyzes the civil law so these are uh, the different I mean, uh, property uh, is uh, every kind of law that relates to the property the civil law possession mean that uh, you are going to possess what is your possession uh, that you hold this what is the trust what is the trust deal what is the contracts what are the different types of contract what are the rules and regulation of the contract persons acts their acts and the persons rights and duties their liabilities uh, intentions what is their intention what is their motive what is the negligence and what are the rules of regulation so this is related to the civil law and, and in the analysis of every kind of civil law is called the analytical jurisprudence historical jurisprudence it studies the history of law and evolution of law over a period of time and also amendments introduction of new principles of law so uh, from the definition and from the uh, title historical jurisprudence means that uh, uh, in in this type of jurisprudence we discuss about what is the history of law what how law emerged how law produced how people in, in, in different civilization uh, make laws made laws and uh, how they implemented laws and what are the different types of law in different civilization different nations in different eras so scope of historical judgment what is the importance and significance and what is the objective of the historical judgment? it studies the principles of law in their origin and developments that take place over a period of time uh, we can say that it gives the past history of uh, important existing legal co co conception and principles of the particular system so uh, this is very important one because uh, the every law has it, its history and its base and uh, with the need of time with the uh, modern technology with the uh, changes of uh, different environment in, in uh, with the changes of uh, our development uh, from the science and uh, progress of the science we uh, may change some uh, uh, changes in the law but the law remains same because uh, if I am giving you the example from here uh, that we will discuss about the uh, partnership act uh, contract act so we will discuss about the contract act that is uh, uh, the British law and this is implemented in our society as you know uh, we have been ruled by the uh, Britishers in, uh, and, and, and their, uh, they, uh, their system of uh, living was systematic and they made different laws and they implemented their laws through court and we are following all that kinds of law in our uh, course and in our uh, practical uh, course of action uh, we are following that very law 
so this is the history and these are the uh, 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 this is very important one but we made some changes through our culture our religion our society uh, and, and the need of the time so the history is very important and the history of every uh, law and every kind of law is very important because uh, these are the footings of law these are the basics of law and everyone follow the basic law because uh, the the fundamental and the base give you uh, uh, that uh, give you the point give you the and the way that you uh, can build an uh, uh, and uh, a nation you can build uh, a country you can build uh, your uh, system of jurisprudence you can build your uh, political system you can build you can your economic system so uh, everything need base without base there is nothing so that's why this is the importance of the historical jurisprudence uh, the objects of uh, for instance the origin and development of the nature of the private property and individual ownership or contract so these are the uh, different types of uh, related to the civil law the object of the historical jurisprudence is to defend the earliest of mankind as they are reflected in ancient law and the point out their relations to the modern thought so this is what i have discussed earlier the branch is not the same thing as legal history so this is like this uh, uh, the ethical jurisprudence it deals with the law that should be in deal uh, an ideal state it lays down the different purposes which should be fulfilled in an ideal state it studies the modifications in the existing law in order to achieve these pur uh, purposes and objects the main object of the ethical jurisprudence is that the attainment of the justice so uh, from the definition and from the um, title ethical jurisprudence means that uh, the law should be followed should be implemented through uh, keeping in mind the ethics the morality and with justice and uh, with uh, all kind of uh, 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 discrimination there must be a uh, there must not be a discrimination that everyone is equal so uh, if uh, the law and that and this is a common proverb that everyone is equal in the eye of law so when uh, the law treats everyone equally then there must be a justice this, there must be a harmony there must be a peace in the society so uh, the society will run uh, equally and uh, the justice will prevail in the society so this is means uh, that uh, the law should follow the ethics and rules and regulations which are uh, very important scope of ethical jurisprudence ethical jurisprudence deal with the law in the ideal state as it should be law exists to fulfill certain purposes so uh, if the law is not fulfilling in the man object and the man purpose then there uh, will you will not find ethics it is for the branch of jurisprudence to lay down what those pur pur purposes are and whether these are fulfilled by the law existing and any given time it consider the modification necessary in the existing law so that it may fulfill the object for which it it, it exists the other two branches are concerned with an analysis of the law as it is or as it has been without being concerned with the adequacy or inadequacy so uh, the man uh, purpose of the ethical jurisprudence is uh, to there must be um, uh, um, uh, we follow the moral values we follow the ethics uh, because uh, in every field uh, there must be ethics uh, and and if you are a business person you follow the ethics of business and if uh, you are a lawyer you follow the ethics of your code of law and if you are a manager you follow the ethics of your management skills if you are a leader you follow the ethics of uh, your leadership skills so 
uh, in every field there is ethics rule and there is also ethics for law if uh, and jurisprudence uh, if uh, uh, the law is not followed by ethics so there must be uh, a destruction there must be, uh, not there must be injustice in the society so uh, the peace will be disturbed and uh, the society will not be run properly difference between analytical jurisprudence and historical jurisprudence historical jurisprudence is a scientific study of the origin and development of the principles of law so this relates to the principles of law it treats the law it is it has been in the past where is analytical jurisprudence is a scientific study of the first fundamental principle of law as now extended so history tells us what is uh, the uh, law in the past while the analytical jurisprudence tells us what is the what are the fundamental principles of law what are what are the explanation of law what are the uh, what law says about all these things what uh, is the point of view about this course of action of this uh, specific case so it means the analysis while the history says tells us about the history of the law what are the law it was in the past it treats the principle of law as it exists today historical jurisprudence tells us what the source of particular principles of law was where from it was derived what was its shape and scope in ancient time how and under what influences it came to develop and uh, through what state it passed to assume finally the shape in which we find it existing today so this is the historical jurisprudence everything is simple analytical jurisprudence studies the basic principles of law as they exist today uh, without being concerned with the history of those principles the modern tendency is to make a comparative study of the two and uh, while dealing with the analytical jurisprudence not to ignore entirely the historical jurisprudence so uh, both are related with each other uh, everyone is related to each other because we cannot ignore the uh, scope and significance of any of uh, um, from the both uh, analytical jurisprudence and either it is the uh, analytical or either it is the historical jurisprudence and we also uh, uh, keep it in mind what are the uh, progress of the science what are the evolution of the society and what are the need of the uh, today time and what are the modern tendencies to make a comparative study of the two why if we will not comparatively uh, study the laws then it will be difficult to implement the law in the society because uh, today is what the world is today is uh, very different from the world it was in the past so uh, and, and this is the modern times and now modern times need modern uh, uh, laws and uh, so there must be uh, uh, need of different legislation and the, the need of different uh, ethical uh, terminology defined by different uh, jurists and different lawmakers uh, to make different laws for this time because this is a very different time from the past time not to ignore entirely the historical jurisprudence but also analytical jurisprudence can't ignore the historical jurisprudence because uh, uh, with the history and with the base because nobody can uh, ignore his base or his uh, origin or his fundamentals because the fundamentals are uh, your uh, identity and this is your base on the base of uh, this uh, you uh, mm, can build a nation and you can build a system in the society difference with the uh, with the respect of state the state according to the concept of historical jurisprudence was an association of human being having the two primary functions of war and administration of justice uh, the modern tendency is to uh, end war all states normally exercises their function within a defined territory so uh, within the state 
the uh, scope of this that <coughs> story so in history the states were only concerns about the two main areas the administration and the war because administration mean internal affairs and war mean external affairs and uh, you know in, in previous history in civilization and oftenly uh, people uh, involved in the war now today uh, we know in everywhere there is a war and we are in, in this in the situation of war with our neighbors uh, with India so this is uh, uh, generally uh, the modern tendency is to end war and everyone want peace and this is uh, um, the time of economics this is the time of progress and this is the time of uh, developments so this need to be and so there is need to um, to, uh, to formulate or legislate new laws that uh, um, maintain law and order in, in, in the world and in peace to maintain the peace in the world and the society. All states normally exercise their functions within a defined territory and every uh, and, and there is another kind of law you can say in the in, in, in the country that is you can constitution is also a kind of law and every state have definite territory and their constitution their laws are for their citizen for their territory and for uh, external uh, there must be a treaties between the state different between uh, with respect to law from the historical point of view jurist justice was administered administered uh, uh, by the early kings under divine inspiration without there being any law in the modern sense so in, in previous um, era in uh, old times uh, the kings or dictators follow the divine law uh, and they don't have the uh, sense of humor and sense like they make a law uh, uh, made, made laws different type of laws uh, like in modern sense people are making or legislating the law law according to Austin is a command uh, emanating from a definite superior given to others who are habitually obedience to obliging them to a course of conduct with a threat of sanction in the event of obedience it involves the idea of prescribing not a single act but a series of acts so uh, according to austin that there must be a uh, punishment there must be a sanction means the concept of threat sanction means uh, the concept of punishment so there is a concept of punishment so that's why people obey law because if uh, uh, there is no concept of punishment because this is the natural phenomena this is the natural concept reward and punishment and everyone is accountable of his or her, her own action and there is a concept of punishment and there is a, an islamic terminology there is a hudud law there is a, a civil laws economical law political laws and implemented by these uh, uh, states and uh, society uh, and historians and the khalifas and they get the punishment so where there is a punishment there is a sanction there is a threat then it can be easily implemented and obeyed by the society as well difference with respect of custom according to writers like sir henry mann uh, uh, the repeated judgment in the similar case established certain principles which in the course of time came to be recognized as a binding and to be accepted as governing general course of conduct so custom means uh, the habitual uh, treatment of a different cases giving the same judgment on the different cases custom means the habits and the traditions of a uh, society so the accepted as governing general course of conduct the custom took roots in the societies and these customs were followed by people in the uh, in in the belief the following them is obligatory and not optional or voluntary custom were treated as law so this is obligatory this is custom uh, this is compulsory on um, the society that they followed their custom and so this is not a voluntary or optional uh, that uh, on the option of uh, anyone that he can either opt or not this is no 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 this is a compulsory act so custom is also 
a source of law and kind of law and it, it is treated as the law in analytical jurisprudence custom occupies a much less important uh, place all customs are not law all customs, of course all customs are not law only such customs and sets as satisfy certain conditions are recognized as having the force of law that are uh, <coughs> that is recognized by the uh, members of the society and they think so that uh, and they, that that has uh, given the some <coughs> uh, uh, look of the law and uh, it is uh, look like that it is it is the implementing of the uh, justice in the society and it is I mean that uh, it, it is going to protect the rights of a specific person that uh, custom well considered as the force of law so that's it for today uh, advantage of the studies of uh, jurisprudence the following are the advantages of the studying uh, this science jurisprudence is the grammar of law and teaches the lawyer and the legislator proper use of legal terms it ensure had uh, homogeneity and accuracy in uh, a legal uh, phraseology so uh, actually this is the basics of law and it uh, teaches the lawyer and different legislator and experts uh, of the law uh, and it give them their uh, uh, their rules and regulation on the basis of the rules and grammar they made different law and they implement law so uh, it, this game uh, homogeneity this game uh, unity in the society so it trains the mind and enables us to discover and avoid legal misconception which would otherwise escape notice so uh, it is very important that it it, it 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 uh, mm, uh, uh, ensure uh, uh, and it uh, that there must not be a misconception it uh, and give us uh, um, practical shape that we can implement in the society so a person who has studied jurisprudence will be able to study foreign laws intelligently if need be <coughs>